the Church in Wales, a traditional institution with hymns, prayers and communion. Business has been good for millennia, but with ageing congregations, falling numbers and abandoned buildings, the church is facing a serious religious recession. So does the answer lie within these walls at St Michael's College, Cardiff? A new generation of priests is being prepared for a life that is as likely to include the prison cell as the pulpit, and they're taking their message to the most unlikely places. I've still got to write my sermon for tomorrow. But what will congregations make of the young upstarts? She was very confident. And what will their reactions be when they try to mash up the mass? In the 21st century, the clergy have to get out there. This is a fully working in Barming theatre. But will the new kids at the altar get their dog collars? Talked about leaving. <sighs> yeah, itchy feet. In this programme, Hugh faces a tough test in Cardiff Prison. He's a trainee vicar, he's got your vicar with L plates. And takes Sunday service behind bars. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to the Lord. Lord. Oh, Christ. Rugby mad Roz is finding college life tough going. I didn't expect it to be easy, but definitely didn't think it'd be this hard. And second year Marcus takes a leap of faith in Merthyr Tydfil. My experience has been always fairly middle of the road, churches that have been there for years. So uh, anything sort of pioneering is quite new to me. This is the roller coaster ride of the Vicar Academy. We've been given unique access behind the scenes of an entire year at St Michael's College, Cardiff. These young students come from all walks of life and have been thrown together in a very unusual place the Church in Wales' own college for training vicars. They're being prepared for daunting challenges. High numbers of clergy about to retire, ageing congregations and crumbling buildings. Vice Principal Stephen Roberts knows the challenging business model facing these students. If you've got a big building, a lot of money needing spending on it, a small declining congregation, how do you turn that situation around? That's a difficult, a difficult question. As well as going out to parishes and chaplaincies across the country, the students spend a lot of their time in lectures and Bible studies. But this isn't to everyone's tastes. With students coming from all types of backgrounds, there are some that prefer a more hands-on approach. Rugby-loving former bouncer Roz likes having a good time, and she's not afraid to say it, even in her lectures. I am passionate about rugby. It is the best game in the world. It's the thing that brings you all together, it makes you put your body on the line for the other person. And the men are really quite hot who play it, so that's always a bonus to watch. And it's really good drinking as well. You get wasted with the people who you care about. But she's having severe doubts about her place in the college, with its emphasis on academic study. I don't think it's meant to be this hard. I didn't expect it to be easy, but definitely didn't think it'd be this hard. The rest of society is kind of like seeing that people learn on apprenticeships. I mean, realistically, the best thing that the bishop could have done was been like, you know, let's just whack you in a church and you'll get formed that way. Like, if you put me straight on a four-year curacy, then I'd probably be a lot happier right now because you're busy, you're constantly doing it, you know. But I will have had these two years to have got really bittered against it. And then I just don't know if it's the best starting point. And also I thought that the church would be a lot more forward-looking. Some parts of it is. Because they really need to change. I'm just not ready to <laughs> give it up yet. Whilst one student is wrestling with doubts, another is facing a different kind of challenge outside the confines of the college. Hugh Bryant has had his run-ins with the law in the past, which makes his placement at Cardiff Prison all the more unusual. Going into the prison and knowing that with my own past I could easily have ended up in there myself was quite, uh, quite nerve-wracking to go and see these people. Hugh's mentor, Mark John, starts the morning with a rundown of some of the prison chaplain's key duties. You may also be involved in um, the breaking of bad news. Uh, where a family member phones into the chaplaincy where we find out and verify what that news was, a granny may have died or something like that, and then um, we go and tell the prisoner, 
check if they're okay, allow them certain phone calls to, to the family to work out and allow the whole process to sink in. The chaplains also work in some of the prison's most challenging areas, including the segregation unit, where prisoners are placed if they've broken rules or need to be separated for safety reasons. In that unit, we have prisoners who, for whatever reason, have stepped over the line of the prison rules and need, need, to, be, need to be kept in a place that is safe and secure away from other prisoners. In fact, sometimes you go into that sort of situation and people will um, be avid readers of the Bible and will be asking you something obscure about the Old Testament that you might never have heard of um, because they've had time to do that. In all of that, we look for signs of vulnerability. It's over to the segregation unit to face one of the prison's toughest challenges. Anybody in particular we got issues with or anything down here today? The majority of them are on study confinement uh, and the other chaps we have a lot of concerns and we're just waiting for um, Broadmoor to come down and interview him really to see whether he's uh, suitable uh, to go there. Okay, thank you. The chaplains offer a listening ear within the prison from someone who's not in authority and there's an encouraging request from the morning's first port of call. You can have a Bible, is there the one? Yeah, there's normally one out, just yeah. there. No, the Bible's out. Um, All right, more. we'll get one brought down for you, buddy. All right? And uh, uh, this is Hugh, he's going to be working with me for a while. He's just uh, in, he's a trainee vicar, he's got a vicar with L plates. All right? Cheers now. Remind me of Bible. Yep. And the vicar with L plates hopes that every request this morning will be as easy. But things are never that simple in the prison. Another second year student is moving out of his comfort zone. Marcus has been sent to Merthyr Tydfil for his placement on a council estate. It's a million miles from his previous day job in rural Wales. I used to work at the Centre for Alternative Technology in uh, Machantleth. I drifted into sort of atheism, you know, and um, so I sort of quite fervently held for a few years, and then until I started exploring Christianity again in mid twenties. In the past, I've been a builder. I've always worked outside. I work with my hands, and uh, so that's going to be hard to perhaps let go of that a little bit and, and have a different sort of working routine, you know, in life as well. I'm exactly sure where I'm going, but I think it's up here somewhere on the left. Looks like a something on the left. So this is it, I believe. I recognise that church from the photo on there that someone must have shown me. Marcus has come to St Luke's Church at the centre of the Gashley Deer Council Estate in Merthyr. The buildings don't look like a traditional church, and that's the point of the pioneering ministry that they're part of. Oh, yeah, you must be Marcus. Oh, this, Paul, yeah. Paul, nice to meet you. Please cool, it's cold. Good journey. Freezing, yeah. Come Hi, mate. Please, come Welcome. Cheers. Marcus will be following Vicar Paul Edwards whilst in Merthyr and learning about the unconventional ministry in Gethley Deg. Yes, so um, this is the, uh, these, we've got actually two flats um, okay. um, on this block and two ground floor flats and uh, that's actually how, um, where we do our ministry from. This is your church? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The church in Gethly Deg works in the community and Paul shows Marcus their food bank storeroom, a programme that prevents people from going hungry when they hit financial problems. A lot of these food is, is um, a ministry called Food Bank. Yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah sort of that. Yeah, sort of college. it's all donated by local people. You know you get these like two for one uh, offers. Yeah. Maybe they say, look, you know, baked beans are on for two for one. Would you like to donate the, it? Oh, the really? free one uh, and stuff. Okay. And, yeah. and the, the people of Murph have been really, really generous. Yeah. And, Oh, okay. We've had around about, I think it's been going since uh, November yeah. last year, and we've received already about four tonnes of food. <laughs> it's yeah, amazing. So it's amazing. Okay, that is a lot, isn't it? Really exciting, yeah. yeah. More and more of the students are sent out to the real world where the church is trying to reach out to the community. And the students are being exposed to people from different backgrounds to their own. Hallelujah. Back in Cardiff, third year Alex Grace is in the middle of the family's morning routine. Hallelujah, praise the Lord, right where we are, amen. As a woman and divorcee, she's not the type of person who would have been allowed into the college 20 years ago. 
And as well as fighting prejudices, she also has to raise two daughters who have plenty of tough questions. Well, Elizabeth thinks I should know the answer to every question she asks me because I'm nearly a vicar. I don't know what that means. Alex went through tough times during her divorce, but this eventually led to a stronger faith. I was really struggling and things were going awfully in my life and I just, I had a kind of a real argument with God and I said, if you're not going to stop this suffering that I'm going through and help me, then I don't want to know and I'd like you to leave me alone and go away and I don't want you anymore in my life. And I've never felt such aloneness or emptiness and complete silence as I felt then. And it's only lasted a day because I was just begging him to come back, you know, and to, to be in my life. And for me, that was the turning point where um, faith became, for me, a matter of life or death. Despite the strength of her faith, the church had some reservations before letting a divorcee train to be a vicar, and there was an extensive interview process. I had a quite a long interview. I can't remember how long it was, but it was... It seemed to go on forever. Um, and two men came to my house to interview me, one ordained and one not. And um, it was incredibly difficult. They warned me um, the night before that it would be painful and difficult. And it was. It was very, very difficult. They have to make sure, you know, there's nothing that could be uncovered later that could bring scandal to the church or bring harm to anyone involved. So it has to be, I think, fairly invasive, but it was very, very difficult. And when they went, I was very upset. And that sort of lasted for, for quite a while. Alex is keen to develop her experiences of pastoral care on the course and to get to help others with their problems. Today, she's joined by first year Rebecca Stevens on a placement at a care home run by the Methodist Church. One of the tasks Alex has to complete on the placement is putting together an afternoon of familiar hymns and poems to entertain and engage the residents. Welcome everybody to our little impromptu hymns and poetry afternoon. Um, I'm Alex and this is Becca. Um, so shall we just pray before we start? Father God, we thank you so much. For People just seem to feel really at home here. People, I think, who might have had concerns about being in a nursing home. Very different and much nicer than my expectation was. So we're going to sing our first hymn, which is hymn number 13. Chaplaincy in general, I think, has a huge role to play somewhere like this. It went really well, actually. It was um, it was lovely to have a, a good mix of hymns and just everyday poetry that people. I think people recognised them, and uh, yeah, I think it went well. In Cardiff Prison, Mark and Hugh are continuing their rounds of the segregation unit. Prisoners with time on their hands often ask the big questions in life and can come close to despair. Mark shows Hugh that you need to use every weapon at your disposal to help them, even Bible studies. I wanted to ask you some things about the Bible, I've been reading the Bible lately. Read Mark's Gospel. Right? I saw your Bible, what is it? Yeah. The best bit to read, because it's named after me, Mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, what I say, and it's short, right? It's only 14 chapters long. And the chapter's not very long in, in, in the Bible. I was on a train something, because I tried out, I've been in prison like, I've only been out like 10 months, so I learned my whole life. I'm 29 now. I've been in prison for all right, do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've been out like a month, few months later, that's up to like 11 months. So what I want you to do so for me, this is around. your own work, right? I'll put the, put the marker in there. There. And it, put it, no, I won't write on it. It's from there, it's not even that far, look. I'll show you, it's, it's actually quite short. There we are, just up to there. It's that much. Yeah. And the good thing is we can have a discussion about that, but also what I, I, what, the other thing that we do, we run special courses in here on Mark's Gospel. So we'd love you to have a chat with you, and if you were feeling up to it in some time, then we could get you on one of those yeah. courses and we could look about that. Okay? Yeah, yeah I do that, yeah. Yeah? Yeah. Good man. Yeah. But that's for you to read. Just Mark. Remember me, Mark? That's Mark. 
But the next visit along the unit throws up a surprise for Mark, as there are always some prisoners who try and relieve their tensions in a different way. You all right, buddy? I can see you're busy at the moment. You take care. Thanks for that. <laughs> Did you know that? What? He's having a pull. No, but he's been doing it all morning. It's not something you often see in the parish pews, but it's all in a day's work at the prison. And no sooner has the work on the segregation unit finished than it's off to interview a new arrival. With the majority of prisoners having had problems with drugs and alcohol, the situation facing Mark and Hugh is a common one. So long you've been living rough? Long time. Have you got a drug problem then? What is it you use? Are you, are you on methadone now, are you in here? Hmm? So you just do heroin when you're outside? Yeah. That's all right. Have you got any next of kin? No. Part of the chaplain's role is helping such prisoners to get access to the help and services they require. Sadly, there's a whole group of people that... Um, sort of way of keeping warm over winter for some yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Come in and get themselves, you know, three meals a day, get them tidied up, shower every day and all the rest of it, stuff they wouldn't get on the outside. Anyway, Mark has noticed that Hugh has been holding back, and at the end of the morning he's given a chance to fly solo. Mark pushes him to chat to the prisoners on another landing who are keen to discuss their plans for when they get out. So, is this your first time in there? Several times. Several times, yeah. Uh, he won't be back in, he won't, he's not the type. Uh, no. I don't think I'll be back in. Fingers but crossed for this next time, is it now, is it? Yeah, I've got work so far. Secured out there when I get out. It's not what cleaning, it's just local bar work. But that's what I need out there, is just something to keep me busy. Coming back here, just with the staff they have, not turn me around, they give me advice, not for me to give up, just, just to keep moving forward. Right? We've got to um, move on, we've got to get over yeah. back over the sea wing. So if that's okay? All right, was he all right? Yeah. Nice meeting you. Sure now? Yeah. So. Right. I haven't got to get my clamp later on or anything. No, no. All right. <laughs> Whilst Hugh starts to find his feet, there's still the challenge of the Sunday service, where he'll have to face hundreds of inmates. Another student being taken out of his comfort zone is Marcus on his placement in Merthyr. Mentor Paul is taking him to a scheme run by a number of churches in the town. The night shelter is held in a different church building every night, offering a meal and a bed to the town's homeless during the winter. And on arrival, one of the workers has a few words of encouragement. Nobody's yeah. killed us like that. <laughs> <laughs> Canon Steve Morgan takes Marcus under his wing to introduce him to those who make use of the night shelter. Uh, this is our friend Steve here. Yeah? Also, Martin yeah. Marcus. Oh. Yeah. yeah. He used to be mm. a dealer here for drugs, but he's really getting his life together again. Okay. We're journeying with him, etc. Yeah. Fantastic oh, yeah. stress. Yeah. 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 And Steve yeah. and I and others have been working with those in the drug community to be able to enable them to come. Why? Right. Right People do. They sleep out, go to Cardiff. No, I didn't need to have a good time during Cardiff. Yeah, you better go, don't you? Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, that was an old man. Um this night gender, this kind of send up is totally different from yeah, that gender. Yeah, yeah. Like you come in here, you sit down as like a farm. It's quite a lot, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, you have a, well, it looks nice, you have a good meal. Yeah. And you get looked after as a you know what I mean, presenting you need or want. You know, yeah. they kind of help you yeah, up and yeah. Hopefully yeah. so you'll be housed shortly and then if you come back into yeah. that shelter, yeah. there's a helper. Yeah. He's a legend in Murphy. <laughs> oh, it's too sick, you know. It's not long before Marcus is rolling up his sleeves. And helping out in the kitchen. Well, this place is, is impressive, but it's nice to see the churches working together. Sort of practical help, help really helping people. It seems. Yeah, it's quite an inspirational operation. Having completed kitchen duties, Marcus and the helpers all share a meal with the users of the night shelter. I'd like to maybe get involved again, and it's. I don't know whether it's something I'll do in the future. Depends where I go, but it's good to have seen it. My experience has been always fairly middle of the road. Churches that have been there for years. So uh, anything sort of pioneering is quite new to me, so it's good to, to see what goes on and you know, possibilities. Back in Cardiff, it's rugby training time for Roz. 
and while she's completely confident on the field of play, she's having increasing doubts about staying on the course and becoming a vicar. Her role on the rugby team is a way of escaping the doubts that have been clouding her mind. It's really good fun, it's really good crack. Um, it gets out some pent-up aggression and it's just good to have a run around, like, what makes you feel good. And you can be crap and still get played. Rubbish, and you can be rubbish and you still get played sometimes. A young woman like Roz, training to be a vicar, arouses as much confusion as encouragement amongst her teammates. Well, I can remember just asking you what you did, and when you were like, oh, I'm trained to be a vicar, I was... I did, at first of all, say, OK, are you joking? And you're like, no, it's like, cos I, again, thought you had to be a man. Oh, I just didn't think that they did anything, like rugby or anything. I just, I don't know, I, I didn't think they did anything active, if that makes sense. I thought they read books and stuff like that. I think it's great, you know, yeah, break the good. stereotypes and stuff, you know, maybe... More, more people will go to church if they thought the vicars were more like them. It's just interesting that she's combining uh, her faith with rugby. Um, I think it's a great combination. But why does Roz have a better attendance record at training sessions than at morning prayers? It's more fun, I feel more useful. Better being active than stationary. Um, it's more unpredictable as well, like, as you can see tonight, didn't know what was going to happen, still don't really know what's going on, but it's all good. In Cardiff Prison, Hugh's placement is entering more difficult territory. The most challenging duties of a chaplain is having to break bad news to a prisoner, a task that can cause all sorts of unpredictable reactions. Right, uh, Hugh, we've just had a telephone message through uh, informing us that uh, one of our prisoners on the wing here, his grandmother, has just died. So one of the jobs we have to do regularly is inform um, a prisoner that a relative has died. What we have to do is go through the form and just ensure that this is kosher details, get the contact details of families and everybody to authenticate it, and then go and find the prisoner. Uh, it's quite a demanding thing to do. Obviously, I'd like you with me. I'll obviously take the lead on this, and there won't be a, won't be a big issue. So we just pop through yep. here onto this wing, go and pick him up, and then come back here and uh, get on with it. OK. All right? As privacy is such an issue in the prison, Mark's first task is to get the prisoner off the wing and out of sight of the other inmates. And whether he's a Christian or not, the natural place to take him with Hugh is to the back of the chapel. Your brother phoned in this morning. I haven't confirmed this, but your nan... Yeah? ..apparently died at... Um, oh, half my granddad, ..Sanguilly yeah. Hospital in Camargo. Yeah, Would yeah, that make sense? Sanguilly, yeah, yeah. She had cancer and I thought she did. So you are aware she was ill? Yeah, uh, she was ill. She never touched the fog, but the light shone the pub and she had cancer in the throat. Um, I can put you on the phone if you want to talk to either of those people. But they both left numbers, so I can, I can put you on to either, either yeah. of those. On this occasion, yeah. the prisoner took the news calmly. But Mark is keen to know whether Hugh has gained some insight from a task he might have to perform himself one day. Had you ever been in that position before where right on hand telling somebody somebody... Uh. No, but I've had it said to me. Yeah. Um, I've been on the receiving end before now. Yeah. Um, and had to deal with my own family when things have gone bad. But it's different dealing with your own family and dealing with a complete stranger. It's entirely stranger. different. And, uh, it, does, it, has, uh, it does have an effect. You do, you do approach it in quite a cold clinical yeah. way because when you're doing it perhaps three or four times in a week on occasion, mm -hmm. you can't afford to get too sucked in, yeah. in your own emotions into what's going on. I mean, you just yeah. can't get anywhere. You've got to give the news and often repeat it once or twice. You've got to get uh, it through and then pick up the pieces afterwards, yeah, yeah. not push it around. Uh, that's why we're, as soon as we have the news, um, we get them on the phone to a family member because that then makes it more... Makes it real. ..more normal. And as ever in prison chaplaincy, onward and upward. Let's get moving somewhere else. Uh. <laughs> onwards and upwards for this trainee means taking part in a service far removed from the usual parish church atmosphere. Give it a go. Fine. Nervous is just my natural state of being. Go, just get a seat there and wait there. You'll be able to... No, no harm. I feel, so just go and sit out of the way. Yeah, that's absolutely weird. Yeah. Right. Into battle. <laughs> sure, it'll be fine. It'll be interesting to see the dynamics of how it works. As I was just explaining it's a bit more chaotic with the sort of bringing in of prisoners. So you don't have the, the usual procession in to start the service. So there's no sort of preparation and now it begins it's going to be this sort of chaos before the, the calm i think 
Yeah, I've picked up this morning that Hugh seems a little bit apprehensive about going uh, going into battle with the prisoners. Most of the ordnance are coming in training, get a, feel a bit sort of shocked and uptight. He's really just going to be doing some little bits in the service and uh, just to get, give him that idea and involvement. Hugh now has to face one of his biggest and probably most captive audiences since joining the course and has an important role to play in the service. So we meet together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. As Christians, we come together, and at the start, we stop and think. We pause. Whether we be the Christian 10 seconds, or 100 years, each time, each day, but especially on a Sunday, we just need to stop and think. So in a few moments of silence before God, Let's stop and think and say sorry for the bad things that we've done. I ask you to stand now while Hugh reads the Gospel. Listen to the Gospel according to Saint John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. And Jesus the service around. also features the Cardiff Gospel Choir, regular visitors to the prison on Sundays, and the moment of contemplation has an obvious effect on the prisoner who has just learned of his grandmother's death. Jesus came down from his As the service draws to a close, what are Hugh's reactions to the unusual experience? Yeah, I thought it went quite well. I mean, it uh, didn't seem that much different to a, a normal parish church on a Sunday. I must admit, there's many a Sunday where I've had a lot fewer than that in church on a Sunday. Mm. Is there anything that struck you as different? Um, well, uh, was, uh, once or twice you did the old headmaster routine and said, you know, <laughs> quiet now, boys. But, um, but you know, uh, people weren't been deliberately disruptive, I don't think. It's just yeah. once once or two start chattering, they all start and... You just have to keep yeah, it in the really. bud. It's, because uh, it's, it's, you are introducing to people to something that's not familiar. They're yeah. not familiar with worship. And there's always the opportunity to come and preach anyway. <laughs> You'd be most welcome. <laughs> Anything to get out of writing your own sermons. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Next time, Steve gets his hands dirty with a bishop. So people get attracted to see uh, a bishop in his purple robes washing people's feet. Lorraine has to take charge of two archbishops. I keep looking at my notes and thinking, what am I going to forget? <laughs> and Roz gets a final warning. Yeah, I got my first yellow card <laughs> in the last 10 minutes of the game.